Perfect. Looks like we are ready to go. Um, so as I mentioned, this is the second of two station organizer calls, which we will be uh, hosting here at Dr. Cog. And at the first meeting, we really started very high level. I kind of talked about what it meant and what it looked like to be a station organizer on the day of the event. We reviewed some materials, talked about best practices, and we will do some of that today. Um, but I did just want to sort of continue this call, uh, continue the conversation we started last time. And so in this call, I'm gonna share a few updates, let you know about best practices for promoting your station now that we are so close to the event, and then we'll have some time for conversation at the end. Um, just like last time, I'm happy to answer any questions or um, have any conversations you would like to, to bring up. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can share your thoughts. So again, just like last time, feel free to type in any questions, comments, feedback into chat. We will, or I will rather, pause um, periodically throughout this presentation to address those. And then my team, Brittany, Mia, and Blair are also on the call. So if any questions come in that they can respond to, they will be responding to them in the chat box. So um, that's one way to ask the question. When we get to the end of this presentation, I'll also land on a slide that says questions on it. Um, at that point, I'll stop speaking. If anybody has questions, comments, or discussion topics they want to raise, you can simply raise your hand, unmute yourself when I call on you, and then speak. So that's how we'll sort of manage questions here. But do feel free to put any thoughts um, you have into chat, and we will document those and hopefully be able to respond to each of those. All right, so let's uh, kind of talk about the agenda. So I mentioned, you know, this is the second of two calls, so we are not going to really rehash all of the information that we talked about last time. Um, we will hopefully try to make this valuable for you um, as kind of a, a follow-up um, situation. I will ask you all to please just mute your uh, mute your audio if you're not. Speaking. I can go through and manually unmute people, I'm sorry, mute and unmute people, um, but it's a little uh, difficult to, to toggle between the presentation and the mute, so if you could just keep an eye on your own settings, I would appreciate that. So, um, I just want to mention the things that we'll talk about today. So I wanted to share with you where we are in terms of registration. There are basically <laughs> three populations that we are registering um, for this event. We've got riders, we've got station organizers, and then we've got business challenge participants. Um, I also want to share what our email and social media communication schedule will look like so that you can align with us and also see how many messages we've sent and uh, what, what uh, marketing we still have uh, left to do. I will share a little bit about our paid media strategy, um, partly as a way to reassure all of you that Dr. Cog is doing everything it can to drive participation for this event and really bring visibil visibility into your participation um, in Bike to Work Day as well. Um, we do have some resources for promoting Bike to Work Day, which we can review again. A couple new assets since we met last time in March that we can discuss. Um, and then I wanted to talk about group rides. So group rides are an opportunity for us to help riders um, get comfortable riding their bikes on the day of the event. And Brittany on my team has some best practices to share uh, for coordinating your own group rides. And we also have some that you could sign up for as a participant. Um, finally, we'll review prizes, talk about how you can incentivize people to visit your station, and then we'll break for questions. All right. So wanted to start out by looking at registration counts. So as of this morning, we had about 4,500 registered riders. I would love if we could boost that number to at least 5,000 by the end of the week. So I'm going to ask everyone on this call today to post a social media message from your organizational or personal accounts and send users to the bike to workdayco website with a call to action to please register. Um, if we could get that uh, 5,000 um, registration number by the end of the week, I would be really happy and I know um, I know all our stakeholders would be as well. We've also gotten 159 stations registered um, and some of our stations have seen growth in terms of the vendors who are participating in their station. The last time we talked, uh, we had about, I think 89 stations. So that number has gone up significantly since March. So really excited about those numbers as well. 
And then finally, we've got 270 organizations participating in the business challenge, and they are quite actively participating. Um, what that means is there is a company coordinate, coordinator at each of these 270 businesses who have taken on the role of socializing bike to work day with their workforce um, and are using our communications and marketing materials to let their teams know that this event is happening. So again, um, we really want all of your, everybody's help to get the word out, share on social. Um, we'll talk about different strategies to get the word out as well. So I did want to just share a little bit about our communication strategy. So all of you have received um, communications from the Bike to Work Day inbox. Um, and sorry, give me one second. I am just going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, perfect. I think we're, we're good to go with the mutes now. Um, but we have planned to send 15 email communications to the people on the Way to Go and Bike to Work Day list between March 1st and the end of the event on June 28th. Um, so far, we've sent out nine communications and we have six left. Just to give you all a sense um, of the size of our list, depending on the segmenting, those communications can go to anywhere between 5,000 and 30,000 users at the topmost of the list. Um, so we're really um, you know, doing our best to drive traffic to the registration site. Each time we send out a communication, we see quite a bit of traffic and those registration numbers improve. So as I mentioned, we still have um, about six communications left to go between now and the end of the event on June 28th. We scheduled or rather are planning to post a total of 45 social media posts. And this number really could go up um, you know, linearly, exponentially, depending on the types of interactions that we get and how we wanna respond to those. Um, we have about 14 left to be scheduled, but as I mentioned, that number could absolutely go up. And we're always looking for people like you, our stakeholders, our station organizers, to engage with us on social media. So please look for our posts on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, amplify them if you can, and interact with them as well. If you want to reshare those, um, it just kind of broadens our reach even more. We have also invested um, quite a bit of money into paid media flights. So I wanted to talk about all of the opportunities that you might even, or I guess the assets, the marketing materials that you might see while you're out in the wild. Um, so we've done a few out of home um, strategies. So we have two uh, billboards that are currently live. During the recruitment period, we had four billboards that were live, um, but two are currently live until June 27th. One of them is on I-25 south of 104th um, near Thornton, and the other one is in South Denver, east of I-25 and Arapahoe. So if you happen to be driving in those areas, keep your eyes open for the billboard. If you happen to be a passenger um, who, who sees one of those billboards, take a photo if you can, post it on social, tag us. It's just another way we can amplify the fact that the event is happening. Um, we also engaged in a trade with RTD. Um, those of you who are located downtown, you should be able to, um, at some point in the next couple weeks, see a 16th Street mall, mall ride shuttle with the Bike to Work Day wrap on it. Um, we also got one flat iron flyer shuttle wrapped with Bike to Work Day assets. Um, and then we'll have digital signage displayed at Denver Union Civic Center and also US 36 RTD stations. So again, an appeal to all of you, if you happen to see any of these assets in the wild, take a picture, um, post it on social, send it to us, tag us, whatever you want. Um, we, will, we will appreciate any of those photos and we'll help you um, also boost those posts if you put them on social. Um, speaking of social, We've also launched eight weeks of paid social on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and we also have several paid display ads running as well. Um, we invested in some search phrases for Google AdWords and we launched four Google AdWords ads. And um, next week, I encourage everyone to pick up the Westward Summer Guide. Um, it comes out on June 8th and there'll be a quarter page advertisement for Bike to Work Day um, in, the, in the edition. It also has a QR code that makes it easy for people to register. Um, and then we'll be launching a homepage takeover on the Westward as well, linking people to the website. So all of this to, to give you some ideas um, of things that we're doing here on the Dr. Cog side. If you had any sort of budget and were able to invest in any of these um, tactics, we would be happy to talk to you about our strategies. Um, 
but I also wanted to share with you, there are lots of ways you can promote Bike to Work Day, even if you have no budget or an extremely small budget. So I wanted to talk about those, um, those strategies on this slide. So we have a toolkit, and in fact, Brittany is going to drop that into chat for you. This toolkit lives in Dropbox, and if you are on the last station organizer call, I actually shared my screen, walk you through some of those assets. Um, but we have lots of material shared in that folder, um, which we can talk about in a moment. But we do encourage you to visit that toolkit and download materials. Um, find us on social media and interact with us there. Um, I do encourage all of you to use owned media if you can to promote Bike to Work Day. So use your email if you have a newsletter, a social media account, or a website leverage those channels to let riders know that you're participating in the event. Um, consider submitting a press release, especially if you have PR support in-house. Um, this is sort of, you know, this, this is what a, a PR professional is, um, their, their bread and butter really. So if you do have a PR person on your staff, definitely ask them if you can talk about developing a press release to let the media know that you'll be participating in Bike to Work Day, what you'll be offering um, at your station, and just getting out that encouragement for riders to register. Way to go, we'll be sending out a press release. Um, actually, we'll be sending out a couple of press releases, one before the event, one on the day of the event, and one the day after, or maybe a week after, since the day after is really leaning close into that holiday weekend. Um, in the press release, we're going to talk about our goals for the event, so those rider registration numbers. Um, we will uh, talk about the prizes, so what are the incentives to get people to participate. And we also want to share if there are any stations that you all are organizing that we think the media should hit. So when we decide what stations we want the media to visit, we look at a number of criteria. Um, we definitely want them to be able to find multiple vendors at a station. So if you have a super station, for example, where you're collaborating with multiple businesses, multiple organizations, chances are we will include you in our press release. If you're hosting a party after the event and there are not very many parties, we'll likely uh, mention you in the press release. So if you're able to do something different, unique, we will probably include your station in our communications. But uh, as I mentioned, if you do have PR support, uh, consider consider putting out your own release to let the media know. Um, and then something that my team has been doing quite a bit of, I'm sure everybody knows, the summer is a really great time for tabling opportunities, especially in the Denver region. Um, this Sunday, I'll be at Viva Streets, which is um, a really fun um, program that's been uh, organized by our partners over at, over at Downtown Denver Partnership. Um, Viva Streets is a ciclovia where um, several streets in downtown Denver will be closed off for cyclists. Um, so we're really hoping that we can drive some registrations at this event and get people who are excited about biking to sign up and register. Um, if any of you are doing outreach events or tabling events, I highly recommend um, bringing some Bike to Work Day marketing materials with you, talking about your participation there. We have lots and lots of materials that you can use. Um, so let's talk about what those are. The station map, so bike to work day .co, find a station page is a digital map that you all should be familiar with. Everybody who's on this call has registered a station um, through the bike to work day website. The find a station map is the user um, interface, so the public facing map. Um, definitely share that URL, let people know that they can find you and other nearby stations by visiting that map. Um, we also have other materials in the toolkit. We've got a QR code poster. Um, so someone could walk right up to your tabling event, scan the poster and register easily. We have a QR code one page document that can be printed out that has prizes listed. And then we have large banners and posters that list the URL. We have digital versions of all of these assets in Dropbox, or you can reach out to btwd at drcog.org if you need to coordinate a pickup of tangible items. Um, we had an open house, I believe it was on May 17th, and we had about 33 station organizers visit us at the office, and they picked up hard copies of things like posters, mini posters, we have bookmarks, stickers, and we also had some small prizes and giveaway items that they could share at their station. Um, 
If you weren't able to make the open house, no problem. Um, reach out to btwd at drcog.org. And if you need any of those tangible items, we would be happy to coordinate a pick up, a drop off with you. Um, just let us know. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, um, I'm pretty excited to announce that we have um, just sort of a, a marketing asset that came out of some conversations with um, VFC. So VFC is an outdoor company that's located in downtown. And when we were talking about their station, in fact, Jamie, I think you're here on the call, um, they made a great point. They said, how are you promoting all of the downtown stations? So what we did is in partnership with Downtown Denver Partnership, we put together a map listing all or all of the registered stations that are in downtown um, that map will have a legend but really the intent is this handout allows people to see exactly where to go in the downtown denver area if you are not located downtown denver i know this is not going to be helpful for you the map component especially will not be helpful for you however there is a bingo card on the map kind of like a scavenger hunt um, type thing that we will be uploading to dropbox as well and if you wanted to print that out, hand that out to people at your station, that is just another opportunity for people to win prizes. If they complete the bingo, scan it and send it over to my team, we'll put them into a drawing to win prizes. So a couple more um, ways you can incentivize people to register and participate on the day of the event. Um, so I also wanted to talk a little bit about group rides. So coordinating and participating in group rides is a really great way to help socialize the community and help them feel comfortable participating in Bike to Work Day. Um, way to Go is hosting two group rides. We've got one um, that will start at 4.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday, June 21st. And then we've got another um, event that will happen at the same time on Wednesday, June 28th at the end of the day, at the end of Bike to Work Day, essentially. Um, both these rides are going to take off from the REI downtown um, flagship store. So thank you, REI, for all of your support. We definitely couldn't have done um, these, these fun programs without you. Um, and then we'll take riders to the Emporium Brewing Company in the Highlands from downtown Denver. So there are a couple of reasons we're taking uh, riders to that uh, brewery specifically. First of all, um, Emporium will be offering a dollar off beers to anybody who rides their bike there on the 21st and the 28th. And on Bike to Work Day, the 28th, Emporium is going to be launching a Bike to Work Day beer, and they'll be hosting a huge party with live music at their site. Um, all I can tell you about the beer is that it's a light, fruity wheat beer um, that sounds really refreshing after a bike ride. So I encourage all of you to sign up and participate in that. Um, Brittany is going to drop the sign up link into chat. We are also looking for group ride leaders. If you're a seasoned and comfortable rider, um, especially somebody who, you know, puts, I guess, safety sort of at the, at the forefront of your, of your riding um, style, let us know if you're interested in helping us lead a ride. You could email us at btwd at drcog.org. We're just looking for confident riders who can help us get um, those, those participants to the bar safely and then back to the flagship store at the end of the night. So definitely let us know. Um, and finally, it's really fun to coordinate your own group ride. I did want to turn things over briefly to Brittany. Um, she has some best practices in case you're interested in coordinating and organizing your own group ride. Um, so Brittany, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Great. Thanks, Nisha. Yeah, so um, we can also add your group rides to our website. Um, there's a section on the site for group rides. So if you're hosting one, let us know. Um, same email, the btwd at drcog.org. Um, we have a couple like just really basic etiquette um, tips and tricks on that page with the group rides, but I wanted to go over a couple if you're considering leading them. Um, so, you know, just a couple of things really going over kind of setting the stage with the group before the ride about communication. So if they're able to do hand signals or to say that they're turning or if there's debris in the road, to point it out or to say that there's something kind of obstructing the, the path. Um, often with group rides, um, even if they're casual, we'll say something like car up if a car is coming towards the group um, in the opposite lane or a car back if there's a car that's attempting to pass the group just so everyone's aware. Um, and really going over, you know, following good etiquette with rules of the road for um, group rides and just being prepared. So encouraging riders to have everything they need to be, um, you know, 
if they had like a flat or if they needed any tools, if the ride is going to take place near the end of the day or after dark to make sure they know that it is um, Colorado law to have front and rear lights. So just being kind of prepared for those riders. Um, and as ride leaders, considering having some way to distinguish yourself from the other riders, just so people know if, if there's an issue or, or if they're looking for guidance that they can go to you. So something that might be um, good to consider would be like a yellow vest or a reflective vest to wear so that they know that you're um, helping lead the ride. Sometimes people will keep like a first aid kit on hand, just kind of some basic things just in case. Um, and, you know, some ride leaders will also encourage having a list, uh, a sign up like ours has, you know, emergency contact. So having some way of contacting someone else in, in the case of, of something that was, not, you know, less than pleasant that happened. Um, yeah, and I think really important is to ride the route, to know your route really well, um, looking out for obstacles or any concerns, taking note of intersections that might be a little less visible or more dangerous, um, choosing you know low traffic streets to ride on, and really being prepared for those intersections if you can't avoid them to have a, a game plan or to communicate with other ride leaders. So, you know, depending on the size of the group, at a minimum, we would say having a ride leader in the front and someone in the back just to make sure that no one is left behind and regrouping after um, lights, if not everyone was able to get through the light or or after, you know, hills or other things. So just making sure that everyone gets to the, the ride safely. So often with rides, we'll see kind of this group ride mentality where everyone kind of goes through um, the light or, or the stop sign all at once because the group is going through. So really being careful to let people know, okay, we're gonna stop at the light. Um, if it's turning red, we'll just make sure that no one, not the whole group goes through. So just really keeping in mind that their goal is to have fun. And then as a ride leader, your goal is to make sure that the group is, gets safely to their destination. Thanks, Brittany. And I think to add to that too, um, you know, just these same tips that I gave regarding marketing, um, use your owned media, let your team know if this is something you're coordinating yourself, send out an email, have a sign up list. And most important, have a team captain. Um, thank you. We do so have I, a couple of questions that popped up in chat, Nisha. Do you want me to wait to go over those or do you want me to read them now? I thought we should probably just address these while you were talking. I opened up the chat box. Um, oh, perfect. So yeah, Brittany, if you wouldn't mind um, reading them out, that way we can make sure I don't miss any. That'd be great. Great. Um, someone asked, are we able to add our company logos and station location to the poster slash design files? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I will offer a couple of suggestions. So uh, for one thing, you can absolutely um, take our existing poster. We have the design file. It's an AI file in the station organizer toolkit that uh, Brittany shared. If you have a graphic designer on your team, by all means, feel free to modify and adapt that poster for your needs. We also do have, it's called a writable poster. Um, it is an 11 by 17 printable PDF version where you can actually write down the location of your station, the time it will take place and what you're offering there. Um, we have those available for download, um, Emily, but we also have physical versions of that um, poster. So if you wanted to come pick that up, get a Sharpie, write down that information and post it, you could by all means do that. And then, as I mentioned, as long as you've got a graphic designer who can open up an Illustrator file, you should also be able to adapt and modify our existing poster. Um, we had a comment or, and a question, um, how do we update our listing on the find a listing page? Also, it doesn't appear that the stations are loading currently. Interesting. Let me talk to our developer about the station loading issue. Um, I sometimes run into that, and I think it's because I have to clear my cookies and my cache. Um, but let me see if there's something we can do from the from the website end. Um, and so when you say update your listing, um, I, I would imagine that you're just asking how do you edit a station that you've already created. The steps will be pretty similar to creating the station. You'll go into that um, bike to work day .co slash organizer URL. You'll be prompted to log in. And then there's a little toggle that says manage station. So if you've already created a station, it will pull up any of the stations you've already made and give you the option to edit those. 
right. Um, we have a comment about Dropbox. Um, let's see here. Is there's um, is this something we can grab from you as far as um, signage that goes on stakes, or do we have to print it ourselves? Yeah, so you could also print it yourselves. Um, I think the signage that we have, which fits on the A-frame stakes, is probably going to be better for your needs. So let's um, let's coordinate a pickup um, or a drop off so that we can get you those items. Would you email us at btwd at drcog.org just so that we can um, schedule something with you? Um, we had a good comment about group rides. Um, lesson learned from a recent group rides to walk your bike around construction closures slash detours. And uh, we had a person crash trying to get back up on the sidewalk because there was a lip in the concrete. So yeah, that's a good note. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's see here. Um, and we had a question about materials being sent out um, for bike to work day, if they're being sent out. Yeah, so Byron, we uh, we do have some materials for you already in that Dropbox link that Brittany shared. And um, Brittany, I'm not sure if Byron can see the entire chat or just the chat since he joined. So if you wouldn't mind dropping that Dropbox link back in, those are the materials um, that we would recommend you use. Um, but Byron, if you needed to pick up any posters, physical assets, um, let's, let's coordinate a drop off or a pickup. Okay, we have one more. Um, is there somewhere I can pick up North Denver? In North Denver, we're in Longmont. Last year, we were able to pick up in North Glen. Yeah, Jamie, why don't you um, also email us at btwd at drcog.org. Um, someone from my team could probably meet you, or we've got partners in that area as well who we can coordinate with. So yeah, just shoot us an email and we will take care of you. That's it for chat for now. Okay. Well, keep the keep the uh, the questions, the comments coming. This is really helpful to hear everybody's thoughts. All right. Um, okay. So I did also want Brittany to talk a little bit about the prizes. Um, again, this is just one more way, one more incentive for us to get people to register. Um, so I know all of you are putting in a lot of work to host your station. Wanted to reassure you on this call today that we're doing everything we can to make sure that the public knows this event is happening um, and is feeling enticed to participate. So one of the ways we're doing this is by offering some pretty cool prizes. Um, so Brittany was hoping you could talk a little bit about the prizes Dr. Cog is offering. And if you had any strategies for ways station organizers who might have a limited budget could potentially give away prizes at their stations. Yeah, so one of the ways that we ensure participation in Bike to Work Day is through prizes. So we really try to choose prizes that are, you know, really high incentives, something that they'll value, um, not just kind of like a cheap giveaway that they wouldn't really want to register to ride for. So this year, um, our grand prize is a turn e bike. So it's almost $4,000 bike, really, really great bike. Um, so we're thinking we'll get a lot of registrants who are interested in um, entering to win. So to be entered to win, they just simply need to register to ride. There's no other sign up or any extra work that they need to do to be able to be eligible to win the prizes. And then after the event, we will randomly pick a prize winner from the, from the pledge list. Um, and then we have a couple other items that are listed here. Um, so we have a Garmin review radar with camera and taillights. So this is basically a bike taillight that also has a camera um, to kind of uh, save video of, you know, any close calls or any concerns. Um, there's also an option to connect with an app or any sort of like GPS unit to alert a rider if a car is coming up behind just so that they're aware. Um, we have these really interesting shock absorbing cup holders. So this is great for riders that maybe have a coffee on their handlebars and you know don't want to have it spilling all over the place this kind of helps mitigate that issue um, we have some spoke wheel lights um, so often it's more difficult to be visible from the side as a cyclist so just having a light there makes it easier as a car maybe or a bike maybe crossing an intersection where a car is stopped um, and then we also are offering a pro tune-up for Mike Spikes. So they're a really great shop with a couple locations, which can also help cater to riders that are maybe in several different locations and don't have to drive a really long way to get to, um, to the shop. 
and then you know ride recovery is really important so we're offering that massage from Lodo massage um, studio and then we have a couple other items that are um, listed for for pricing but I think we have some really exciting things to offer this year that people would be really happy to receive if they want a prize. Um, oh, and we had some questions about pricing and things too that I'll go over here. Um, the turn e-bike is one size, so that is one of the, the draws of choosing this bike is that we don't have to worry about something being out of stock or not fitting the rider. There are several adjustments on, um, on the bike that make it uh, be able to be one size um, reasonably with a lot of different um, size riders. So we actually have it in the office displayed and ready to go. So thanks REI, we're really happy to have that um, in the office to kind of tease our, our staff. <laughs> um, and then we had a question, does the media toolkit have a printable poster listing the prizes and a QR code to register if the rider hasn't registered? Oh yeah, you answered that already, sorry. <laughs> No, that's fine. It's a, it's a really good question. All of the posters we have do have the URL. Um, our little bookmarks have the URL. So um, pretty much all of the assets that we would ask you to share do have that link on it. Perfect. And Heart Family Secretary was able to provide some more context on the e-bike. As far as sizing, it should fit someone anywhere from um, four feet, 10 inches tall to six feet, three inches. So quite a range there. So thank you. Um, and then Mia just mentioned to me something I, I forgot. We also have a one page document with the QR code and it also lists all the prizes. So again, all of these materials should be in the station organizer toolkit for you to print out and use. Excellent. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's great that the bike can fit such a range of sizes. And Brittany, I think you did a really great job picking out the prize um, and making it something that anyone could could enjoy. Those of you who are at the open house on the 17th would have seen the actual bike. Um, I just wanted to shout out and say thank you to Rosie on the call. Uh, she works with REI and she actually walked the bike over that morning so we could display the price. So um, it was a nice, nice visual for everybody. As Brittany mentioned, it is a little bit of a tease for our employees because they are not eligible to win um, because they're Dr. Cox staff. So. All right, excellent. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, um, something that Brittany and I had discussed was if you are hosting a station and maybe you don't have that much budget, but you wanted to give away a prize, um, she had a great suggestion and that was invest in one big prize and potentially raffle it off. It's a little bit cheaper than buying things in bulk. So just a couple ideas to, to make sure that you're able to um, get the engagement that you're looking for. So that really wraps and concludes um, the, the portion of the call that I had planned to go over. Um, as you can see here, we're on this question slide now. I think we've had some pretty good conversation on this call, but I did wanna open things up for questions, discussions. And then as I mentioned, if anybody has had to sort of pivot or change your plans since the last time we met and your station may now look a little bit different, um, we would love to hear what that what that process looks like and what you're expecting for the day of the event today. So as I mentioned, if you wanna chat, just raise your hand um, or unmute and, and start talking. It doesn't seem like people are clamoring to, to chat. Uh, Luke, did I, you have a question? A question about the directional sign. Sorry if I missed yeah. this. Um, are those available to pick up somewhere or is they are? Okay. Um, what was that email? Was there an email address I was supposed to? Yeah, so I bet you Brittany will drop it into chat because she's good at that. Um, but you can also just email us at btwd at drcog.org. Um, and so, yeah, just let us know that you're looking for the directional sign. We'll get you a couple of those with the H frame. Thank you. Sure. Um, and Michaela, did you have a question? Yes, hi. I was wondering if you could drop the um, Illustrator file um, or whatever format that's in for the Joyride Creative uh, into Dropbox so that we could use that um, on some of our, our own photos for social media. Yeah, absolutely. Um, would you mind saying that again? Do you want us to drop the, the design file right here into chat? Um, into, if that's uh, easy to do, or if you could put it into the Dropbox, like into the toolkit, 
um, so other people could access it too. I don't know if that's something that other people might want, but we we sort of wanted to put together our own creative using a, an image from our property uh, with yeah. the with the Joyride creative over it. Perfect. For some reason, uh, Dropbox is struggling to open right now, but I believe that design file is already in the Station Organizer Toolkit. Oh, is um, it? Okay. I didn't see it in there. If it's not in there, Michaela, let me make a note to just make sure right after this call. But unfortunately, um, Dropbox has been having some issues the last couple of days and looks like there's been a server timeout. So um, once I can load that up, I will take a look. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you you mentioning that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Okay, I actually do have it pulled up right now. So let me see. Okay, um, I'm not seeing the complete contents of the folder. So Michaela, I will follow up with you um, personally. And then for the rest of the people on the call, just be aware that we will put a very uh, well labeled poster design file into the station organizer toolkit. But I admit I've been having some challenges um, with the with the Dropbox site the last couple of days. So uh, give me I, give me I do 30 see minutes. here. Yeah, I do see in here the um, an AI file for the Bike to Work Day 23 poster design. Is that? That, is that should true? be it. Yeah, okay. that's the one. OK, then I think I'm good. Thank you so much. Oh, good. I'm glad you were able to find that. <laughs> Great. Any other questions or just comments, notes people wanted to make, ideas you have? Well, I don't see any hands raised, um, and I don't believe there are any new comments in the chat. Um, just like last time, I will stay on for a few more minutes if any of you have questions that you wanted to just talk to me about in a smaller group um, feel free to stay on after the rest of the uh, after the rest of participants drop um, we're also happy to take any questions through email so again that email address is btwd at drcog.org um, and as I mentioned we are here to help you um, between now and the event so just let us know what that looks like and we are happy to to work together thank you all so much for joining today Thank you all. Anisha, I do have a quick need. Um, yes, we were on the, well, while we were all here, I got an email from Denver Health. Okay. So sixth Broadway. They um, need a banner and some posters and some materials. So I was hoping I could drop by today if that's possible. I will be here today. What's your schedule looking like? Uh, it looks pretty clear. So um, truth is I can leave here at let's say 12 15 so they're right to 12 30. yeah do you have my cell phone number just text me when you're in the lobby okay perfect i think i okay. do awesome i will okay. email it to you just in case perfect um yeah so banners posters we can get you a bunch of stuff um mia reminded me we are actually out of the wayfinding signs so the directional signs, I promised everybody we're going to have, yeah, have more. the printer. We do? Oh. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch more in the closet. Good. Um, Thank sure. goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't have to worry about that. And Blair, you don't have to open up another PO in that case. Good. Good deal. Good stuff. Okay. Good. Yeah, I took a bunch of stuff to NREL yesterday. They're thrilled. So I'll come get some more for Denver Health today. I'm excited. That's okay. great. See you shortly. See you, Mike. And Ashley, I, I saw yeah. you wanting to insert a word. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I had to like refresh my page to get my audio to work. So I apologize. I wasn't asking when everyone was here. Um, but I, I, I think, and this, correct me if I'm wrong, earlier in the conversation, um, you guys were talking about like we, um, I'm located in Golden. Um, and um, at the moment, um, well, when I signed up, we were the only station here, but it looks like since then two more have popped up. So I'm actually meeting with um, another one of the stations because Golden's obviously right. like really small. Um, and so I'm meeting with another one of the stations today to see if we can like do some type of collaborative thing. Um, but 
uh, we got a donation of coffee from like a local coffee shop. Is that the kind of stuff that you guys would like put in that newsletter blast? If we had like, we could promote both the Colorado Mountain Club and, you know, Red Silo Coffee Roasters. Is that stuff that we can submit to you guys? Yeah, a hundred percent. So send it our way and we can do a little shout out on social media. I would say use your owned media, your email, your social media to, to shout out the details of that. And we will also okay. do the same thing. Okay. That's great. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. We're, we're, we're super, super excited. And so I think between like that and then us and then the city of golden and um, cores, like, I think we're going to have like a pretty robust, like partnership thing going on here. So um, I just wanted to see, like, I wanted to bring that to our, my meeting with the city of golden today. That's so exciting. Um, yeah. yeah, we would probably consider putting you in our press release just because we like yeah. to have some geographic diversity. You being all, all the way west um, would be really great for us. So yeah, send us some details okay. um, through email and that way we've got it all documented and written down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, I would say too, oh, sorry, if you're able oh. to get people at the same location doing like what we would call a super station, I mm-hmm. would combine in the description the list of like everyone who's there because like as a writer myself those super stations are like sought after if someone can stop in one place and get a bunch of stuff in one spot they would love to go and then we can kind of remove the other extra pins you know if they're all in the same spot just have that and just have it in the description to say that it's a super station and kind of list out what you're going to have there i think you'll get a lot of people that are excited to stop by Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I, the more I look at the map, it like, it all is crowded in like one corner of golden. So I'm like, Oh gosh, we should figure something out. So, um, cool. I will bring that to the meeting I have today and hopefully we can, uh, we can either consolidate into one of those super stations or figure out how to disperse. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah, really. I I think once you start the conversation, the questions will come, you'll figure it out, but yeah, Yeah, that's really exciting. We've got it. Yeah. I think people, people are, yeah. Last year was, was very fun. Our organization, just like a team from us participated. So we were like, so stoked on getting like our, our own station today, this year. So um, it's going to be really fun. We're really excited. Thank you guys so much for put like the community, your communication and and everything you guys do is so fabulous. Like, like these, like hosting things and the assets you provide are fantastic. So um, our, it's going out to our, uh, our, 30,000 person mailing list today. So um, we're, we're, we're hopefully going to get some more, get us to that 5,000 number uh, before the end of the week. (laughs) End of the day tomorrow. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, We'll probably be in touch soon. That sounds great. And thanks for the feedback. Really appreciate hearing that. Yeah, of course. Chris, and good day. Ashley, I just cool. wanted to jump in and say, get as many stations as you can, you know, up in the Boulder area, we have an insane number of stations yeah. and it just becomes a morning bike party. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's so fun, fun to see people try and hit as many stations as possible. It's kind of bonkers fun. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay. We'll get more, more and more golden people involved. So yeah. Yeah. Exciting. <laughs> Bye, guys. Right. Take care. And Elaine, are you joining us from the Adler Planetarium? Isn't that awesome? I, you know, I I changed this oh, sometime, and I forgot. I keep forgetting. I should go back to my BTC logo, whatever. But no, I did not make it to the Planetarium. I made it to the Institute of Art, which is amazing. Ooh, I found fun. a writers' museum. And of course, the highlight, the Button Museum. <laughs> I didn't know either of these museums existed. Elaine was just in Chicago and she asked me for recommendations. And I was like, I, I haven't lived there in 30 years, 20 <laughs> years. So, but and, you found and, some cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The great city, the portions of food are enormous. So, we're finally recovering from that. <laughs> What fun. I'm glad you had a nice time. Yeah. And oh, we so we rented bikes one day and discovered that riding up the shore of Lake Michigan, 